and this is a knitting podcast. So welcome back if you're a returning viewer and a massive welcome to you if you're new here and thank you for finding me. Um, like I said, this is a knitting podcast um, all about things I make, things I try to make, <laughs> uh, test knits I'm doing, that kind of thing and occasionally trips to other yarn or to yarn shops and uh, fibre festivals, that kind of thing. In fact, this week I have been to Wonderwall in Wales in the UK. So I'll be talking about that a little bit later on today as well. So yes, welcome. It's always horrible starting these things, uh, starting a podcast. I, I try to record four or five times usually before I just get going and get into the flow. So today there have been airplanes and all sorts of things going over. It's a very, very stormy day today here in my little corner of Germany. I live not too far away from Dusseldorf, near the Dutch border, and uh, I live quite near an AWAC base, uh, so a NATO aircraft base, and uh, yet they seem to be doing some exercises today. So I've had to restart a couple of times because of very large airplanes going over. Uh, so apologies if, uh, if, if you hear any background noise. And it's also quite stormy today. We had um, big thunderstorms yesterday, and I think that some parts of uh, Germany actually had flooding yesterday, so or last night. Um, so yes, it's quite windy outside. So again, apologies if you can hear any background noise. But yes, today I am just got back from a wonderful visit to Wales. Um, so I'm originally from Wales. I'm from. I was born in Cardiff. Um, but my family's home is up in the Brecon Beacons, which is kind of just below and into mid Wales. Um, so the mountainy bit in the middle, just above Cardiff. And it's beautiful up there. I love going home. I love going to visit. Uh, and I've, uh, I took some footage uh, to show you a bit of my trip as well. So that's at the end. I, everything I talk about during my podcast is always linked below. Occasionally, if I forget something, just let me know and I'll, I'll add it to the list. But uh, yeah, everything I talk about, yarn, patterns, uh, other YouTubers, that kind of thing. It's all, it's all down below. And also I always put chapters in. So if you're not interested in listening to me chat about, I don't know, going to the beach with, with the dog for a walk, feel free to skip. Absolutely fine. I won't feel a thing. <laughs> so let's start today with what I am wearing. Today, this is the Campside Classic by Alicia Plummer. And I did this as a test knit for her, I think this time last year. Maybe it was a little bit earlier than that. But yeah, spring, early summer last year. But I don't think it was released until the autumn. So I'll put a picture up here for you. I think in the picture that I'll end up using, I was also wearing a hinterland dress that I made uh, from So Liberated, which is quite appropriate for me, Made May. Not that I'm going to do that. I feel like I've got enough clothes, and I don't need to to make uh, to make more to fill in the gaps necessarily. Um, and I certainly do not have enough me made clothes to to wear every day in May. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So yes, this is a DK weight cardigan. Uh, this one I made with fingering weight Shetland wool held double. And I've wear this quite a lot and it's holding up relatively well. I haven't depilled it yet, but it's peeling a little bit in the friction points there. I think where it's rubbing on my handbag where I'm walking around. Um, I'll, I've linked my uh, Ravelry notes below. I think I made this in the fourth or the fifth size. I think I would go down a size if I made it again, but it's a very, very comfortable cardigan. Um, it's got really cute little eyelet details. It's just a basic raglan. So yeah, you can see the raglan, it goes a little bit too far and I could do with it being a little bit smaller, but, uh, but it does make it a very comfortable, easy to wear garment for me um, over dresses and skirts and things. And uh, yeah, I tend, I do wear it a lot. It's a really easily, easy wearable colour for me as well. So I picked up this yarn locally. There's a, uh, oh, I do apologise, my tummy is rumbling if you can hear it. <sighs> I should have had some lunch first before recording. Um, yes, yeah, so what, what was I saying? Yeah, so there's a local to me yarn shop in Village, which is also linked below. 
um, and the lady there supplies lots of British, Scottish, um, also some local yarns as well, but she had this very reasonably priced Shetland uh, yarn that was self-branded, so I'm not sure exactly where they sourced it from, where they had it spun, but I, it's, I'll link it below so you can have a look if you're interested. But it's knit up really, really nicely and it's just a nice, simple, uh, easy to wear garment in a reasonably rustic yarn, so it should wear pretty well as well. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so yeah, that was a test knit that I did about a year ago and I really enjoy wearing this cardigan. There's nothing more to say about it. Okay, finished objects. Uh, we have one, two, three finished objects today. Um, one of which you've definitely seen more than once before if you are a returning viewer. And you may have seen it on Instagram as well. And that is the Botanic Shawl. I finished it. I uh, finished it a couple of, well, a week or so ago and my partner has been wearing it so I had to steal it from him for this because it is a bit chilly today so I do feel a bit bad but he's really really happy with it really happy with it and um yeah this is the second one I've made I'll definitely make another one I think happy with the size happy with the yarn so all of the yarn details are below and on previous episodes but I used for the colour changing yarn this is our tribe from Sheepiers the number is below and that's held with a Yavol superwash from Lang Yarns it's a sock 2575 yarn so it should be reasonably hard wearing and shouldn't stretch in fact both of them are sock yarns so this sh this should be a, a good long lasting yarn that'll take a little bit of abuse if he's chucking it around in the car or whatever so yeah, I'm very happy with that. Turned out nicely, blocked easily. Got it, it dried within hours of, of um, soaking it. It was, it's uh, yeah, really happy with this project. So yes, that is that. Um, in terms of yarn amounts, I did the suggested number of repeats and the suggested dimensions. And I ended up using less, just under 150 grams of the contrast colour and just over 150 grams of the main colour. So it's a, it's one of those awkward ones, to be honest, if I was making it for myself again, I think I would just keep going until I ran out of the yarn, ran, 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 blah, until I ran out of yarn. But keep in mind that the bind off is a metre and a half or so of I-cord. So you do need to save a little bit for that. Um, and it looks really, really effective. I hate doing eye court bind off with an absolute passion. But uh, but yes, that's that. And I'm really happy with it. Okay, the final finished object. Some socks. I don't have two sock blockers in this size because I don't use this size very often. It's for a friend. And that's her size of foot, so I'll just hide the other one behind it, that's fine. So I made a pair of what I would call my vanilla ribbed socks. It's loosely based, I suppose, on um, a pattern that I've linked below. The name of the designer is Kristin Lehrer, and it's her favourite socks pattern. It's a free pattern, really nice and simple. My adaptation is that I just continue the two by two, a two by two rib all the way down the sock, not underneath. So when I'm knitting socks, I use Addy trios, Addy crazy trios. And so it's really simple to divide up where the rib is and where it's not, because one needle has always got half of the stitches on it. Um, so this is a 72 stitch cast on and uh, it's for a size 40 to 41 foot uh, Europe. I don't know what that is in British sizes. I think it's an eight to nine ladies UK, or maybe an eight ladies UK. And well, I would have no clue what that translates to in US sizes. I wanna say a seven US, but that's a total guess. 
I'll look it up. And if it's different, I'll put it here. <laughs> oh gosh, it really hurts to laugh. I've bruised or I've done something to one of my ribs, which I'll tell you about. I'll tell you about it shortly. Um, but yeah, I, it's, it's quite painful to laugh today. But anyway, so these are for a gift for a friend, as I said, and they will be blocked and tucked away, ready to gift for her birthday, which isn't for several months. So it's just one to check off my list before I start the next one. I always have quite a lot of gift knitting, self-imposed gift knitting to do for Christmas and people's birthdays and things like that. So usually my handbag project, as I call it, is a pair of socks or a hat or something like that for, uh, for somebody as a gift knit. So there we go. That is finished object number two. Oh, I didn't mention the yarn. So um, the contrast toes, cuffs and heels are again, they're in the Yavol Superwash. The colour is below or it's on my Ravelry pages as well. And this is a self-striping yarn from Lana Grossa. And it's again a 7525, nothing special. And I've linked the details below. It, it's got a name, uh, sorry, a number, not a name. I was a little bit upset, not upset, that's the wrong word. Frustrated with this yarn though. So when I uh, am using a commercial sock yarn or something, I always ball it up myself because otherwise I don't end up, I, I don't like ending up with that yarn bath at the end and it just all gets into a big nanny knot. Um, and I started knitting with it quite happily before realising that there was a big bit of the yarn missing. There was a knot in the yarn. So I don't know if you notice, the pattern isn't quite right. It goes from the yellow to the grey to the pink. And that doesn't happen on any of the other ones. And it's because there was a big, big chunk of yarn missing. So fine, whatever, I couldn't be bothered to rip back. But it just meant when I did the second sock, I had to try and <laughs> try and match it up. I think I did an okay job. These are definitely matchy matchy socks. And my friend won't even notice. So it's all good. So that's that, finished object number two. Okay, just have some tea very quickly. And next finished object number three. And that is, you may remember, I picked up from a new to me yarn dyer called the We Yarn Company. I went, I spontaneously went to a yarn festival a few weeks ago in the Netherlands in Tilburg, Knit and Knot, and I found this. This is a Glaswegian gentleman who's living and making beautiful, beautiful yarn in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. And this is a squirm sock base. Uh, and the colourway is called Guinan, and I've cast it on, I couldn't resist, <laughs> and made my partner a muscle bra hat. So that's done. I took this back to the UK with me, I took this on the plane with me to Wales, and was knitting away on it. So if you must have, I'd be, well, I can't say you must have heard, most people have at least heard of the uh, muscle bra hat even if you haven't actually knit it and I love this design I've probably knit about eight of these all together in all different colors for, for my partner they're a fantastic way of getting a lovely bright pop of color into an outfit so you've got your scarf reasonably sober and then you put a lovely beautiful oh how nice is that hot pink Gorgeous. So yeah, this colourway is called Guinan, named for the character in uh, Whoopi Goldberg's character in Star Trek The Next Generation. And it is oh, glorious. So a muscle bra is a tube. You can let it longer than that, so you can fold the brim up. But yeah, it's just a really nice use of a special, special skein of yarn. Um, so for the size that I usually knit means that sneakily there's usually enough left for me to squeeze a pair of uh, shorties out of. And by shorties I mean with zero, zero ankle and with contrast cuff, heels and toes. In fact, as the summer's coming along I think I might start 
making a couple of pairs of trainer socks again so I can show you exactly what I mean. I do a slightly taller um, heel flap. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll just cast a pair on so I can show you in the next episode what I'm talking about. Anywho, so this is a muscle bra for my partner and it's just been blocked. I wouldn't let him take it to work today <laughs> because I wanted to show it to you in my podcast and I'm really, really happy with it. So, uh, so yes, I just think it's gorgeous. I just wish I could try it on for you, but as my head is considerably larger than his, I think it would stretch it. It's a bit rude to wear somebody else's hat before they've had a chance to wear it. It's like reading a book before you gift it to someone, isn't it? It's not really the done thing. So there we go. <laughs> That was the finished objects. And next we have a couple of tales of woe, I'm afraid. Uh, the next part that I'm going to talk about are whips. And uh, it's a tale of frogging and swatching, I'm afraid. So you may remember a few weeks ago, I cast on the Celeste, how do you say it again? I can't remember how to say it. Celestria cardigan. I'll pop a picture up here for you. And I started knitting it. And as I was knitting it, I was doing the cable sections. And as you can see, this yarn is not the right yarn for this pattern. There is not enough definition for me for those cables at all. You can hardly see them. This uh, pattern calls for a worsted weight, well, kind of like a, or a very plump DK sport weight kind of thing. But this yarn, I'm just not happy with the effect that I'm getting. And it's a lot of work. And the focus is supposed to be those beautiful panels that I showed you in the picture down the, uh, down the fronts of the, the cardigan. And I just don't think it just does this pattern justice. I love the yarn, I love the pattern, but these two are not meant to be together. So I'm gonna frog this. And sadly, that was kind of a weekend's work doing that, setting it all up and working out the pattern. But it is what it is. I'd rather frog it now than uh, continue with something that isn't gonna work. So I'll have a think about what yarn I'd like to use for this. I think I might pop it away and uh, bring it out again in the autumn and have a think about it then. Um, because I'm not really feeling inspired to make uh, to make it again right now because I'm sad about it because it was, it was such a nice pattern and I was really looking forward to making it. So, um, so yeah, I think I'll revisit that again in the autumn. If you have any ideas for yarn to use, something, I like rustic yarn, <clears throat> but I'm looking for something plump. Perhaps something, oh, what about one of the John Arbon ones? Sorry, focus. So yeah, maybe one of the John Arbon worsted weights. The Harvest Hughes is in a worsted weight. That might be a good option. Anywho, so yes, I'll have a think about that. Frog this, revisit it in the autumn. And this will still be, this yarn will still become a cardigan. Maybe I'll make another one of these because it'll be perfect for this. But just a simple raglan or perhaps maybe, um, I think Petite Knit does a nice high-necked, round-necked round cardigan as well. I think it's the Copenhagen cardigan, so it might, that might be a good option for this as well. So there we go. One item to, or one whip to frog. The next thing to talk about is the test knit that I'm working on, and that is the Costa Tank from Bluebird Pine. I have knit her patterns before. I've done test knits for her before. I love her patterns and I'm really looking forward to getting started on this. I've had some problems with the yarn. So as I might have mentioned, I think in the last episode, I already had some cotton yarn that I was hoping to use for this, um, which was Drops Saffron, which is 100% cotton. And the meterage is... 160 meters for 50 grams. So yeah, kind of a, uh, what is that? A light DK, I suppose. So yes, that's drop saffron. Love the color, happy days. But I swatched with this, I could not get gauge. I had to go down, 
I think it was three needle sizes to get gauge. And then I just did not like the fabric. Um, and I knew that it would take me a month of Sundays to, to knit it as well. Cause I think I had to go down to like a 2.75 millimeter from <clears throat> what's the recommended. Do, do, do. Yeah, four millimeter, um, four millimeter so to, whoa that's that's a big difference so yeah i couldn't get cage <laughs> was not the right again not the right yarn choice i've got lots of this though i'm still planning on making a t-shirt with it in fact the last test knit i did for her was the um was for a beautiful cotton t-shirt that i talked about in my last episode so i think it was the cloud tea um i'll put the name of it down here as well and uh, yeah, so that will become one of those, I think. So instead, I have ordered, and it's it arrived, unfortunately, just before I left for the UK. Um, so I haven't had a chance to actually cast it on yet. The recommended yarn, which is Drops Bell. This is a much thicker yarn. Um, and the weight for this is... 50, uh, sorry, 120 meters per 50 grams. So it's considerably heavier as a proper DK. Um, and the makeup of this is 53% cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen. I do prefer the feel of this one, I have to say. This one is nicer than this one. Uh, the details are below, but this is in marine blue. It's really nice. Looking forward to getting started with this. So I did a little gauge swatch, uh, which is now drying um, this morning, and I'm happy with the gauge. Uh, I'm ready to get started. This pattern, I don't think it'll take me very long to do. It's a tank top. And uh, judging from the chatter in the uh, in the test group um, chat on Instagram, people are really enjoying it and it's, it's, it's motoring along. So yeah, looking forward to getting started on that one this weekend. So yes, two not so successful whips so far, but this one's ready to get off the ground and I'm looking forward to properly getting started on that now that, uh, now that I've got time to focus on it. The other whip that I've got on the go at the moment is a Lento. I'm, there was a, there's a cowl going on at the moment that um, Liner Publishing are running. In fact, I think they've got quite a number of cowls running at the moment. Um, but yeah, this one is the hashtag Lento Love Cal or Love Lento Cal. And I want to make a Lento. I've had the pattern for ages and I tried to cast it on with some silk yarn um, last year sometime. Wasn't the right yarn for the pattern. So I frogged that and used it for uh, another sweater that I showed you last week, a test knit for, for Kadri. That was the Utori sweater. Um, I'll put a picture up here for you. Um, which I'm really happy with. I've been wearing it this week and it's, oh, I love that. I love that sweater so much. I know I'm going to be wearing it for the whole summer. I think I might um, make another one. Anyway, so originally I'd used that yarn to make a Lento, but it didn't work. It wasn't right. I wasn't happy with the, the fabric. So I pulled some yarn out of stash and I've cast on a Lento. Very early beginnings little folded neck, a little folded collar, and the beginnings of the raglan increases, really early days. But I just like having something on my needles that I don't really have to think about. It's just a basic raglan sweater or some, something like that, that I can just go round and round and round and round. I do enjoy, I do enjoy that if I'm just really tired and I need to have something quiet to look at. So the yarn that I'm using for this Oh, excuse me, have some tea, dry mouth. <clears throat> the yarn that I'm using for this is Drops Nord. And this is in the colorway Lemongrass. So it's not one of their uni colors. You can see there's a little bit of heathering there, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. It's the kind of color palette I tend to go for. It's really nice. And I'm holding that with this, which you can't really see so much, but this is a variegated indie dyed silk mohair. 
which goes with my nails really nicely actually. But together, they make this lovely fabric. Really happy with that. I've only got two 50 gram skeins of this, so I'm a little bit worried I don't have enough. Um, oh, by the way, that is, where's the label? I'm not gonna attempt to say this. I'm so sorry, Dutch people. <laughs> It's an indie dyer who's based over on the Dutch coast near Domburg. And she has a lovely, lovely little shop over there. Um, and I went over there, I think last, last March, I think, in 2023. And I picked up two skeins of her beautiful mohair. I think I showed it on my last episode as well. It is silk mohair blend. It feels lovely, really nice colour. So anyway, I'm not sure I've got quite enough of that because I've got 250 gram skeins. So I've also got, where is that? Do, do, do. No, it must be in here somewhere. <sighs> I also have, some, there's not really a lot of point in showing you anyway, because it's a dark green silk mohair that I don't have the label for anymore. So, oh, here it is. It's just a nice plain green mohair. Um, so I'm using this in the collar, cuffs, and on the, I'll use this on the hem as well, uh, just, to, just to make it up a little bit. I think it creates quite a nice change. So you can see I've already used it in the, in the collar here. And you can see that it's more of a uni color than the variegated yarn. Um, but I think that's quite a nice effect. And I've got, I think, 75 grams of this all together. So that'll be plenty to, to do this project. It's so soft. It feels gorgeous. I had this years ago. My mum picked it up. Oh, got to be uh, more than 10 years ago. And very kindly balled it up for me for, for use in a project at some point because she knew it was my colour. And um, me being the responsible non-knitter that I was at that point, not non-knitter, but inexperienced knitter that I was at that point, promptly lost the ball band <laughs> that, she, that she put in the uh, the uh, bag with, with the balled up yarn for me, skeined up yarn for me. So I got no idea what it is, but knowing my mum is something really nice. Um, yeah, so apologies for that. If, if I do find out what it is, I will let you know. But, uh, but unfortunately not. So yes, this is just a lento that I'll keep down next to the sofa here and just pick up every now and again when I need some something potato chippy and not too much thought required. So yes, that is that. I think as far as whips go, I think that's about it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my trip to Wales shortly. Uh, but first of all, just wanted to mention uh, I also watch a podcast called The Last, Last Homely House. Um, oh, it's such a gorgeous podcast. It's by a lovely woman called Kate, who is just, I imagine she's just the most patient, lovely person when she's showing you how to do something. So she does a bit of knitting and a bit of spinning, but I'd say mainly she's a quilter, mainly she's a sewer. And um, I love watching her podcast. I find it really, really calming and soothing to watch. I've tried to do a little bit of quilting, a little bit of patchwork. I did make a um, Super King size paper, English paper pieced hexagon quilt. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it up here. And that lives on, uh, lives on our bed. Um, but I've never tried to make any other kind of quilt. My mum is a is a prodigious quilter. She she is very, very good at it. So it was her that introduced me to Kate's podcast, The Last Homely House. And Kate um, has done this thing where she's produced this gorgeous little book, <laughs> Kate's Book of Things. And it's a delightfully produced little book with memories, and little stories and stories that are attached to particular things. So there's a lovely little story here about a little rabbit, soft toy, stuffed toy. And it's just such a sweet idea and just about being thoughtful about things and 
putting value onto memories, which is just lovely, absolutely lovely. So she wrote a little note in, um, so I should explain properly. Uh, she also has a Patreon and she invited her Patreons to apply to have one of these books sent to them. I, I'm not sure how many there were in total. Um, my mum is a Patreon, so she had one sent to her. But the deal is, once you've read it, you have to write a little note in the back and then pass it on to someone else. And they have to do the same. Write a little note on in the back and pass it on to someone else. So Kate has written in the front of it a little note with her instructions on what to do with it. And my mum has started writing in the back and I will do the same. So this is book number 12. And so far it's been to the Brecon Beacons in the UK and now it's in the western side of Germany, over near Dusseldorf. I shall write in the back and let's see where it ends up. And I'll pop a little picture on Instagram as well before I uh, let it go off into the world on its merry way. What a delightful idea. I really enjoyed that. It's um, one of the best things about being in the crafting community, I think, isn't it? We're, we're all very supportive of each other's work and um, yeah, we're all keen to share and take time and it's just, yeah, delightful. Really, really nice. So. Yes, I've, I will uh, enjoy finishing off reading this and uh, then pass it on to the next person. So thank you for that, Kate. OK, uh, that is everything finished apart from my trip to Wales. As you will know, if you've been here before, I um, was planning on going to Wonderwall, which is up in Bilth Wells in Mid Wales where they at the Royal Welsh Showground. So it's a huge venue. Um, I haven't been there since I was a small child because they have a big agricultural show there every year. And uh, my parents did take myself and my brothers and sisters when we were little um, to go and look at, the, look at the cows and the horses and the sheep and everything. Uh, so yeah, it's been a long time since I, I've, I've been there. But, uh, but yes, my mum and I, we went to Wonderwall in Wales and we had a fabulous time. It was so much fun. Uh, the weather was awful. <laughs> um, the queue to get to the venue was very, very long. Uh, we were waiting in the car for a good half an hour to, uh, to, to, to park, but not because of lack of organisation or anything. It's just a very small town uh, with one road in, one road out. So it's kind of unavoidable um but uh, but yeah totally worth it we had an absolutely smashing time really really enjoyed it and i'll put some footage in here
Okay, that was my footage from Wonderwall. I bought from many of those stalls, well, several of those stalls. And uh, I also filmed my regret <laughs> because, uh, um, yeah, I obviously, I, I'm not a bottomless pit and there's only so much yarn that I can knit in a lifetime. So I did have to step back and walk away from several things that I would have loved to have bought. Uh, the one that immediately springs to mind is the lovely Helen at Nellie and Eve. Um, she makes her yarn locally from her own sheep, spinning it to dyeing it herself. Oh, it was just lovely, really, really lovely yarn. And she was such a nice person to talk to as well. I had a lovely chat with her. Um, and uh, next time I have a, a bigger project that I need some sort of Shetland style yarn for, I will definitely be knocking on her door uh, for some yarn. It was really, really special. My mum bought a sweater quantity of a gorgeous pale sort of turquoisey, sort of a dull turquoise kind of colour um, that she's looking forward to casting on soon. Um, but yeah, I did have a couple of regrets walking away from there. And also Bird Street yarn as well. Oh, the yarn is so lovely. Anywho, so what did I actually buy? So as you could would have seen, oh, by the way, reminder, chapters, if you're not interested in this bit, feel free to skip on to the next bit whilst I ramble about yarn. <laughs> so let's start with what I actually did buy then. Um, you may have seen me drinking from this lovely cup. How gorgeous is that? It's a beautiful handmade mug. I do have a thing about handmade mugs. In fact, there's a, a ceramic fair this weekend near me, which I think I might drag my partner to as well. So yes, I picked this up for myself and this was from a lovely family run company. I put the details below. They don't have a website, but they do have a Facebook page, Phoenix Glass. And um, I think I did some footage in there as well. They made lots of other things, yarn bowls and uh, plates and, and all sorts of different bits and pieces. But I wanted, I specifically wanted a mug because I'd broken one of my handmade mugs recently. And I picked this one. And I'm really happy with it. It's a good weight. <laughs> um, whilst I was at home, my, um, my granddad, who I call Grampy, came to have Sunday lunch with us. He's 93 and he still works full time. He's a piano tuner and uh, also makes him, has made, doesn't make any more, restores and sells pianos. They have a, my fam, my mother's family have a piano shop in Cardiff, uh, which I did work at briefly as well. But he lifted it up and for him, he likes a bone china mug. He was rather perturbed, I think, by the weight of the mug, but uh, he, he, he did think it was funny, but anyway. I digress again. Yeah, welcome to my podcast. We talk about knitting and I go off on tangents. This is what I do. <laughs> so, new mug. Very happy with that. What else did I buy? A new to me yarn dyer. So this is from Pigment and Ply. You can see there. It's very shiny. And the dyer who I had a lovely chat with was is called Jess and she's based in Essex. And oh, look at the drape on that. This is gorgeous. It's kind of a, a bronzy, purpley tone, browny, gorgeous, gorgeous color. And this was the first thing I purchased when I walked in there. I saw this and I was like, I have to have it. It is 65% Merino superwash, 20% silk and 15% yak, which I suppose is what it gives it that lovely drape. It is a skinny fingering weight at 480 meters per 100. Oh no, 120 grams. Huh, I didn't notice that. I thought they were 100 gram skeins. Ooh, I can make a really good shawl with this. <laughs> so, oh, it's so beautiful. It's like the halo as well. It's blowing out a little bit, so it's looking more browny than purpley. It's more purpley in real life. This will be a delightful shawl. Not sure what yet. I'll, I've got 52 weeks of shawls up there, so that something in there will fit fit this, I think. So, yeah, that was that was a lovely purchase as well. Okay, I'm pausing in between because there's been a bit of wrestling going on. I don't want to 
want to be annoying. The next thing I purchased was from Garthenor. So I have wanted to buy some Garthenor yarn for as long as they've been around, I think. So uh, they are a Welsh yarn producer over in West Wales and they make gorgeous rustic yarn in a variety of weights. And I went with their Snowdonia sock. So this is a, um, a nylon free sock yarn. It is 50% Romney, 50% Hebridean. And it says on the back, grown in South Wales, the Scottish Highlands and southwest of England, scoured, spun and dyed in Yorkshire and hand finished in West Wales. And it's certified organic. How gorgeous are those colours? So this one is tussock and this one is khaki. And I will do a contrast pair of socks. I could probably squeeze two pairs out of this. This is two 50 gram skeins. Uh, 50 grams which is 200 meters so yeah yeah I reckon I can squeeze two pairs of socks out of that as long as I don't knit the legs too long should be fine oh, how gorgeous is that but they make yarn in a whole variety of weights going from a lace weight through to a, an Aran I believe and they have the most gorgeous range of um colours uh that's it's usually kind of on a very natural kind of uh colour palette um and many of the um weights form a uh, can form a gradient as well um so the new base what's it called glad is uh it was just i think i showed it in the footage the gradient that you could achieve from picking out one of each of the different colors would be absolutely gorgeous ranging from a, a sort of a natural off-white cream color all the way through to a nice a nice dark charcoal -y into the browns and things as well really gorgeous i could have i could have gone to town in that in their stall and johnny one of the i think he's one of the owners of, of um Garpinal, he was lovely we had a really nice chat about the yarn and it was just so nice to feel it and squidge it in person it feels a bit um what's the word unenvironmental to order it from overseas when i go back there pretty regularly anyway to the uk so um and as i was in that part of the world it'd be rude it'd be rude not to right so that will get tucked away probably until the autumn as well Lay Family Yarn make gorgeous hand dyed yarns and their colours are just, oh, they're, they're just beautiful. I'm collecting up minis again so that I can start another blanket. Thank you, by the way, for all your, your comments on the last episode with ideas of what uh, patterns to use for my blanket. I've started a little bundle of uh, favourites on Ravelry and, I, and I, will, I have an idea though and it's not following a particular pattern. So um, yeah, I'll keep you posted. But anyway... They do these delightful little 10 gram skeins of uh, of yarn and, it, and you would have seen in the in the footage, they have like this carousel where you just get a little basket and it's like pick a mix and you just do 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 all the colours that you want. Oh, so gorgeous. So these are the colours that I went with and I had a lovely chat with Kelly, uh, the, uh, one of the dyers um, and her husband. Um, on the stall there. It was so nice to see her again. My mum and I went up to their showroom in Ironbridge in the UK last summer and it was oh so nice. We bought all the yarn for our advent projects there last summer but, uh, but there we go. So yeah, little bouquet of minis for myself to add to my collection. Okay so we're almost at the end there. Let's check my notes. Um, so one of the things I was supposed to do at Wonderwall was go to a drop spindling class. We, as I said, were sitting in traffic for a good half an hour and that's generous. <laughs> well, we're trying to get to the venue. So by the time we arrived, it was about 15 minutes before our class, our drop spindling class was due to start. And then we just totally lost track of time. We kind of just, it kind of just went blue, 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 blue. oh yarn, shiny, gorgeous. And we just got completely distracted by yarn. And I realised what the time was and by the, it was just too late to go to our drop spindling class. So unfortunately we didn't make it, which was, oh, very disappointing, but it is what it is. Um, but 
I'll talk about spinning more shortly. But I did buy fibre. <laughs> So this is John Arben Tops, and you would have seen in the footage, and also Martin of Knit365's footage, um, who incidentally I saw at Wonderwall as well. He was very sweet. I get very shy in public situations where I meet people face to face. But he was ever so sweet, and we had a very brief chat, um, And but he let me run away after saying hello and fangirling for, for 30 seconds or so. But anyway, I bought Fibre Tops. These are from the Harvest Hughes range in John Arban. How gorgeous are those? Ah, oh, really, really beautiful. You're going to ask me what colours these are now. I should have written it down. I am pretty sure that is Woad. That is Speedwell. And I'm going to say this one's wood sorrel. If I'm wrong, I will put the other colours down below or on the screen. But oh, how gorgeous is that? So my mum bought these for me as a little gift because she is a mill member. And when you're a mill member, you get a little discount. And I think if this, if this goes how I think it's going to go, I think I will get a mill membership as well. Their yarn is just so nice. It's the colours are glorious. They do a nice range of um, you know, vibrant colours like this as well, but they also do the more sort of traditional colours. I use their sock yarn a lot when I'm doing heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, their Exmoor sock is really, really versatile, and I do enjoy using it. Um, but yeah, six pounds fifty for a hundred grams. You can't really go wrong with that, can you? Let's see what happens. On the subject of spinning, um, again, you will have seen in the footage, um, I did a little bit more investigating, had a look at the Loyan one uh, spinning wheels again, that was with Weft Blown. Also had a look at spinning wheels in Ashford again. Um, but I've been talking to some of the women in my knit night that I go to here, and I have had the most generous offer to borrow a an Ashford Kiwi 2 I think it is um, for a little while to see how I get on with it and um, I can't believe how generous that is it's just so nice of, of, um, of this person um, uh, yeah I just just blown away by the offer I mean it is a spare one to her but even so that was just really really kind of her um, yeah, I'm going to go and pick up a, a, a spinning wheel at some point in the next week or so, I imagine, uh, with my partner and just get going, have a go on it. And I'm very, very, very excited to get started. Really looking forward to getting started um, on spinning. So watch this space. Um, yeah, I think that is everything. Yes, that is everything. Um, I think I'll probably wrap up there. I'm over, I've kind of covered what I'm going to be knitting over the next couple of weeks. I'm working on my Lento, going to be working, casting on another pair of socks at some point for another gift knit. I'm also doing that test knit for um, Bluebird Pine Shop and hopefully doing a little bit of spinning, but wish me luck. The last part of uh, this podcast, I've done a little bit of footage of the area immediately around where my parents live in the mountains. And I've also done a little bit of footage of my mum's working spaces. So um, I've got four brothers and sisters. I'm the eldest of five. Uh, and as we all left home, <laughs> there uh, we vacated our bedrooms. <laughs> so my mum has taken over a couple of bedrooms uh, for her sewing and for her quilting. She's got a big free arm quilting machine that you'll see in one of the bits of footage as well. So I've popped in some, going to pop in some footage of that and also a little trip to Swansea Beach that I uh, made with my, with my parents and our dog as well. Oh, and you would have seen at the beginning a bit of footage of myself and my dad walking uh, our, their Labrador. 
Um, the cat was walking with us as well. So my mum's cat, Otak, thinks he's a dog and he just comes for a little walk with us as well whenever we're walking up the track and back. He's so funny, he hides behind things and pounces on the dog as we're walking along. <laughs> and that reminds me, the reason why I've hurt my rib is because when I was coming back, I was not looking where I was going and fell down a small step. It was totally my fault in, um, in the airport. And I've either bruised or, or cracked one of my ribs, but my knees are all banged up, covered in bruises. And uh, yeah, I went a bit of a tumble. <laughs> so, so I'm having a quiet couple of days to recuperate and uh, fingers crossed. Apparently bruised ribs can take two to four weeks to heal and broken ribs to take can take four to six weeks to heal. So yeah, watch this space <laughs> and look where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> okay um if it's a bank holiday weekend for you have a lovely lovely weekend because i'm filming on friday the 3rd of may we've already had our bank holiday on wednesday here in germany our public holiday uh, but i know a lot of the rest of the world will be celebrating over the weekend and in the uk it's a bank holiday on monday so i hope you're doing something lovely and crafty and enjoying spending time with the things and people that you love um, for myself, it, my partner is Greek Orthodox, um, so it's our Easter this weekend. So we will be going to the Greek church on uh, Saturday night at 11pm and staying there up to three o'clock in the morning <laughs> to celebrate Easter. <laughs> so uh, yeah lots of uh, lots of napping will be had but my partner's going over to his mum's house to pick up their traditional sweet bread and eggs this afternoon uh, to bring home with him so we'll be enjoying that this weekend as well uh, thank you so much for watching well done if you made it to the end <laughs> of me rambling and wittering along um, apologies that it was a bit longer since my last episode this time I've just been very busy and going here and there um, I should be posting another episode in the next couple of weeks but um yeah thank you for being here happy crafting and i'll see you very soon